Step lively now. Your Admiral is on board. Hot on pursuit, but they can't chase for long. They know Gabby's got to be around Double here somewhere. Damage. And Tyga, poor Tyga. Zombies, poison slow. They're going to leave him to die here in Sania. I'm not even sure if you could turn around and save your ally. Disruption going down, but obviously he's coming back to the same spot he was before. What a beautiful Fisher. Finally, Gabby shows up once again. Hunting down Insania at every turn. Beautiful Fisher block coming in from Tim's as well to be able to catch Koifa. Make sure he's not going anywhere. Gabby with the double damage. I want to see him one shot somebody. You know Insania who's popped back. This is almost a one shot. Stop. The Gravekeeper cloak were down and he almost got one shot. <laughs> Alright, Foxy. Oh, there he goes, Insania. Oh, it wasn't quite the one shot, but he does finish off with the adaptive strike. Foxy's gonna fall as well. And that leaves no buybacks for Liquid. And just Taiga all alone in the fountain TNC. Well, I guess they did get enough gold for Foxy to be able to buy back. But that won't make a damn difference. Gabby with the satanic pickup and an ultra kill for game one. What a dominant performance by TNC. BSJ, I think you pointed out. Insania's not sure which one to do. He's gonna try and back away from this tombstone, but he's very clear. Oh, oh, God. oh Jesus. Yikes. That's the power of that morphling. He's gonna be jumping forward as that Earth Shaker. Thanks to that Aghanim Scepter. There's a buyback already from Insania. Knows how important this fight is to be able to win. Snowball protecting him. Gabby gets well Let's get involved over time. The hammer's not quite enough. He goes back into morphling form. It does manage to survive. Barely now turns on the Taiga. We'll be able to finish him up, but Fisher slowing down Mickey, who has the damage over time on him as well. Even as he's saved by the disruption, there's nothing really to get him out of here. He can imprison and disruption and do all of these things, but there's so much AOE damage. Gabby jumping even farther forward to be able to catch Koi Bob next. A stone on the boxy as well. Gets the call onto Gabby, but Gabby being healed up by the Soul Rift means there's no chance to be able to claim that kill. Jumping forward again. There is no escape from that Aghanim's Morphling. Can they get the opening they need? Can they run into Gabby and burst him down? They're going to run to Marge. Not the best target, but it is a pickoff nonetheless. And who slips away with a Force Staff coming out from KP? They do manage to get some control onto Mickey for a while. Now they jump into the Chronosphere, and they can't really protect Mickey at all in this situation. It's he's being burned down by Armel in the back lines. They finish up the supports. Taiga falls as well inside that Chronosphere. Boxy will manage to TP up, but no buyback for the gyrocopter, not for another two and a half minutes, and he's down for 95. This is looking like the beginning of the end for Team Liquid. So if you can just keep vision of some of these heroes, the rest of the team can cut across, and they should be able to get at least one or two pickoffs here. The Lena is going to be protected a bit by the Alchemist, but here comes the rest of Liquid. KP does spot him, trying to slow him down. The Stampede looking to be able to run down the Lena does manage to get him. Joe Ford from the Alchemist going straight for Mickey right now with a buyback coming out from the Lena. Can they get him chains done, or Mickey's just going to turn and fight? After all, he's got an Aegis. They can't really focus him down, and it's going to be Armel who dies instead. Mickey survives a little bit longer, but for that Aegis finally falls. But Gabby with the BKB, he's still into Chronosphere, and he's going to let it fly just as the Gyrocopter coming back alive. Can they save Mickey's life? No, they can't. Fire Blast multicast is too much damage, and Koipa running around with no shapeshift is going to be enough to be able to finish off this Lena and maybe get some damage on the KP, but Gabby, he still has a wealth of damage on him. He's going to time walk off some of that to be able to finish off the Lycan. Now just two supports. Can they control him up? The X-12 the silence. Is it going to be enough? Gabby will fall. KP looks like he may die to the two supports as well, but Taiga with the time dilation on him. He's too slowed. They have no magic damage left, and Tini gets another round of his silence back, but uh, oh, he's just KP. He's too tanky. One more new count. The wolves are slowing down KP as much as possible, but the armor is too much. He can't quite finish up this 100 HP ogre because the damage is just not there. And KP will survive through it all, gets the double kill, and Liquid. Better bounty control. They're going to be able to find Boxy here as they make a smoke up into the triangle. Now Mickey is here, does have the imprisonment. They've already used the shrine, though. The snowball is going to try and pick up the axe and steady manage to flick himself away, but that's perfect for Armel. Now with the axe right next to the OT, they get a beautiful dream crawl. They're going to try and run him over, disrupt. By Mickey Pit Point, but there's Tim's entering in with a blink dagger, Echo Slam to finish off the two cores, and a Fisher to be able to block out the Captain Insania. And look at that, KP immediately teeping up to the top lane. They are giving Liquid absolutely nothing. They will not take any damage on their towers despite that split push from Koifa.
out in range from the Fisher. Smoke up from TNT. He's going to run to FNG. FNG does manage to get the ice path. They also have the arrow follow up. Are they going to go for the call follow up on top of that? Now the Chronosphere on three, but they do not have control of Gabby. Gabby is immediately going for the kill on a GPK, but who misses it and thinks the Moonlight is going to be able to get away. And Gambit will win the fight. They not only get those three, but TNT. Well, oh, oh Gabby's coming back in. He does manage to get the two minutes in with the Fisher. Trying to go for Dream. Dream hoping for a patch. Time walks away a little bit farther. And Chan Totem straight up in the air. Four steps. Oh, oh, so wrong. It's so much damage. On Shotzlo as well, that's the three cores dead. Gabby got every single one of them. Now he'll go for the kill. An excess vampire inside of his face. Are they gonna call it? Like, that was literally 1v5. His entire team died. There was a buyback, but like, he just kind of went in anyways. He felt so confident. Uh, chill out. Let's just go back for the shrines. You can let the illusions do the dirty work on the barracks. Don't Are they gonna to, get uh, it? I think they're gonna get it. Oh, no. Nah, they've got fishers on fishers Here we go. on fishers. Oh, okay. Uh, the fishers are blocked. Oh, yes, oh, yes that is right. Oh, no, there again. Oh, no. Dream, he thought he was going to play the combo hero, but he's found that TNC had exactly the answer to the Earthshaker Morphling duo. It's the Disruptor Naga Siren duo. They're going to be able to pull back Shotsho with the glimpse. TNC saying the combo is not broken. We're broken. <laughs> one way to uh, establish some dominance. They do have a uh, level 25 coming in very soon for this Faceless Void. And that is massive if he managed to backtrack and enchant Totem Head. From the Morphling like, Colin, they're going to be able to find the initiation under Armel, who's super tanky. The Meteor's going to be able to bring down about three quarters, but oh, the going to be jumps forward. Dream, what he's going down forward, but he's already been tossed up, being chased on up. Doesn't manage to get up his BKB, though. He's going to continue to try and get this kill under Armel. They tried to floor with the Cataclysm, with all the damage coming out from Dream. He's still not even close to being enough. Armel is sitting at a very healthy 50%, while Gabby is going for the back line. He's already managed to finish up the run. It looks like he should be able to get shots as well. No, for that, gets him back into the fountain. Dream, with no Kronos gear, to be able to fight Gabby. He needs to pray for chain stuns here, and he's not going to be able to get it either. He does have a buyback, but Gabby, oh, a man to dodge on the call from shot so he can keep on swinging on a GPK with Tim's hitting a three-man echo slam. Just the cherry on top for TNC as they just whop on Gambit. They establish very clearly that this was an 80-20 victory. Turning back for 33. 
three mark to see if they can get some sort of signature gaze or force down plays that could possibly get them into the mines. That's what they really need here is Otisor protecting Gabby. Oh, there's the Sinner's Gaze trying to pull back in as best as possible with first strike out. Not quite over the room all mines though, and Armel will be able to run to the left to Gabby Line, but Gabby just in. runs forward with this BKB. Doesn't actually finish off any of these heroes. Oh, he's gonna run to the minefield side though, but he does have that Aegis. So they just blew all the remote mines, and now TNC can back in. GPK, Arthur Sinner going out and going. Does manage to hit the Lina with his Burrow Strike, but doesn't really get the most amount of damage. His allies couldn't follow that up. They weren't ready to go. They were still low and regenning up. Vampire tries to position himself again to be able to get some remote lines out. They take away the Aeon Disc of the Lena, but now Dream has been abyssal played up. Fortunately, our male got stalled, but the Laguna played out. Another round of remote lines is going to do some damage, but still not enough. They do have the BKB from our male back up for him to be able to challenge the Jarcopter, but he's got his Satanic. He activates it. He's going to be able to get a lot of life steal out of that one in the chain. Frost about to go to finish off. Please hit Gabby. It does manage to bounce back to him, but the rest of TNC will be able to split themselves up while our male single-handedly deals with GPK. The rest of TNC looking to be able to retreat, but they can't leave the Alchemist by himself. Uh oh Dream, he just overextend himself, does manage to get a bash in, Armel finish him off, double kill for him. TNC. Strategies like this one aren't even with the Ogre Creep, you've got the attack speed aura from the Smasher. They're just min-maxing every which way. Solar Crest, next item on KP, coming up soon. Smirk and come out from Gambit. There's so many observers and sentries throughout the dire jungle. The TNC, without this smoke, we've seen a lot. Storm jumps straight across the pit and out the other side. Gets information on Roshan. Roshan still dropping low, 1,000 HP. The Sons of Legion Commander, here's your follow up and in they go. But Armel, he actually gets the Ego Seymour. GPK cannot secure the seal. looking for a team. It's the black hole, but he caught Rubik, so there's no turnaround. The Dro getting some good damage out, but all he'll end up doing is killing Tim. No, he doesn't. March has the heals for days. And Dream will die as he walks back out of this mid lane. He does not escape this. A blink forward from Tim will get this done with the dual victory. And Armel, who's been the punching bag of Gambit at the start of most fights. Time for uh, Moon Shards to be bought, right? His buyback cost is currently 2,800 gold. Easily affordable. Armel setting a trap, looking for Dream. Dream, blinding line it back up again. That force him to walk straight past Armel. Now the Mel Strike able to connect with the Bash. Oh. Into the follow up arrow. They try and force Arthur away with the fidget block, but now your Juggernaut is down. His eyes buy it back up. But TNC, the trap has sprung, and Gabby goes in, hexing over the Earthshaker. He can't afford to die. Arrow flies forward. He'll connect over an FNG. Vampire needs to get the hell out of here, but he's been pulled back in by the Willow Wiz. He's not ready for that. He doesn't have mana. He's completely dry. So good. And the they song saw. of the siren, they look towards him, but they don't want him. They want the big attack of the man style. Dodging out from Juggernaut. He's got a chance to fight into the Omnisage, pushing around. They pull back Templar Assassin FNG. Tries to keep him in this fight, but Lestrak just doesn't have enough life to survive. Or maybe he does. When the shields are up, they can go back and reset. Still no kills coming for so such huge ability. But the Echo Slam is able to connect, but not enough damage. Nice talker just consumes the cheese, gets all the life back again. ES will now buy back. Like, it's flying out a Mystic Star for GPK. Looks like Dream's gonna be put to the test. Trying to run out of here, the arrow's off target. Moving far enough away, so this Blink Concoction Sun's gonna work. The Rage has already been used from Life Still, needs to actually jump inside. Maybe you get the Double Chain Frost out, but now you see just how pitiful that damage will be. The only one you bring down low is a Baton. He's got borrowed time. Lich can't move away, slow it up too far. The arrow will hit the mark from Tim's. Archery champion and Armel, you know he's diving. Four hits to kill a vampire, though he had to do it in five. The searing chains just hold TNC in place, but they cannot stop this tide gambit.